Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to do it with the weights and measures. We've got our large flask, and you can see our flask is three and a half inches by, let's take the flask out of the rubber base here, three and a half inches by four inches, okay? So when you're trying to figure out how much flask you need, the first thing it's going to ask you is how big your flask is. And so there is a handy dandy spreadsheet that comes with the investment that you have. And so you can scroll down and say, okay, your flask diameter is three and a half inches and the height is four inches. And it's going to tell you, you need two pounds of investment and 364 milliliters of water. So we know we're going to two pounds and we need to fill this to 364. So, we are going to empty out our rubber bowl, okay? And we're going to fill it all the way up to 250. Like so, graduated cylinder. And then we're gonna need another 114. So we're at 70. A little shy of 90. So there we are at 114. Okay, so now we have our 364 milliliters of water. Now all we need is our two pounds of investment. We have our scale. Notice that without the bowl it's not teared. With the bowl it is teared. So at this point, we're going to just use measuring cup to do it by weight until we get to two pounds even. There we go. Exactly what we need. It's always a good idea to keep your plaster in a Tupperware or some airtight environment because then it's less likely to react with the humidity in the air. So as soon as you're done taking your plaster out of your Tupperware, make sure to put the lid back on to protect it for the rest of its use life. Okay, so there's our two pounds of plaster. And we're just going to gently add the entire batch. Sometimes I'll use the handle of the spatula. You never want to use the wet side of the spatula because then it'll end up caking on your bowl. And then your bowl gets a little heavier each time you do your tear weight. Okay, so you can see that with this plaster, it's a little heavy on the mix, right? And this is for regular castings. So depending on each manufacturer, they're gonna have different specifications. And you can follow those, but I like using the island to establish a good baseline for what the plaster should look like. So you've already seen this process. I'm going to switch to time lapse, but just know we're following the same weights and measures, and this is the bowl that you're looking at full of plaster.
Okay, so you can see that when you follow the directions, you get a lot more waste in terms of plaster, and it's a lot thicker in terms of body. You'll notice in the time-lapse video, I actually diluted it back, and I don't know if that's because this plaster is a little older and had more humidity and cured faster, or if this specific version was just more reactive. But the one thing I do know is the cure rate was very, very quick. It's relatively thick, but you can feel it starting to heat up, warm up, and activate. Still got good flow dynamics, but you can see the volume of waste. I could have easily cast another small flask with that excess. It's always better to mix more than what you need in case you spill or knock something over or find out that you just fell short, whatever the case may be. But generally, I try not to produce this much waste during the investing process. But we're going to go back and just show you that our initial flask, right, is already dried. It's hardened. So those just wait on the shelf and are ready to cast. Um, when you're done, you do want to take the time. I always leave a water bucket around, okay? And this water bucket is just there so that if you have any excess plaster, you can rinse it out of your bowl. So I just drop it in the bucket, put my hand in there, and rinse out 90% of the debris so that way the plaster is separated and it won't clog your sink drain. Right? You want to make sure that you always have a bucket that's full of water and the other bucket will be drying out so that you can discard the excess silica in the trash or wherever your appropriate disposal unit is. And then once your bowl is at this state, you can just give it a rinse in the sink. Okay.